Well, hello and welcome to day 263 of our daily Bible reading. As always, let's begin with prayer. Transform us, God, by your word. Whatever message these scriptures reveal to us today, may we hear and respond with grace and love. Amen. Today we begin uh, with the prophet Isaiah, reading chapter 33, verse 10, through chapter 36, verse 22. Now I will arise, says the Lord. Now I will lift myself up. Now I will be exalted. You conceive chaff. You bring forth stubble. Wind like a fire will consume you. And the peoples will be as if burned to lime like thorns cut down that are burned in the fire. Hear, you who are far away, what I have done, and you who are near, acknowledge my might. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Trembling has seized the godless. Who among us can live with the devouring fire? Who among us can live with everlasting flames? Those who walk righteously and speak uprightly, who despise the gain of oppression, who wave away a bribe instead of accepting it, who stop their ears from hearing of bloodshed and shut their eyes from looking on evil. They will live on the heights. Their refuge will be the fortresses of rocks. Their food will be supplied, their water assured. The land of the majestic king. Your eyes will see the king in his beauty. They will behold a land that stretches far away. Your mind will muse on the terror. Where is the one who counted? Where is the one who weighed the tribute? Where is the one who counted the towers? No longer will you see the insolent people, the people of an obscure speech that you cannot comprehend, stammering in a language that you cannot understand. Look on Zion, the city of our appointed festivals. Your eyes will see Jerusalem, a quiet habitation, an immovable tent, whose stakes will never be pulled up, and none of whose ropes will be broken. But there the Lord in majesty will be for us, a place of broad rivers and streams, where no galley with oars can go, nor stately ship can pass. For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our ruler, the Lord is our king, he will save us. Your rigging hangs loose. It cannot hold the mast firm in its place or keep the sail spread out. Then the blind will divide abundant spoil, and the lame will take plunder. And no inhabitant will say, I am sick. The people who live there will be forgiven their iniquity. Chapter 34, Judgment on the Nations Draw near, O nations, to hear, O peoples, give heed. Let the earth hear and all that fills it, the world and all that comes from it. For the Lord is enraged against all the nations and furious against all their hordes. He has doomed them, has given them over for slaughter. Their slain shall be cast out and the stench of their corpses shall rise. The mountains shall flow with their blood. All the host of heaven shall rot away and the skies roll up like a scroll. All their hosts shall wither like a leaf withering on a vine or fruit withering on a fig tree. When my sword has drunk its fill in the heavens, upon Edom it will fall. Upon the people I have doomed to judgment. The Lord has a sword. It is sated with blood. It is gorged with fat, with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord has a sacrifice in Bozrah, a great slaughter in the land of Edom. Wild ox shall fall with them and young steers with the mighty bulls. Their land shall be soaked with blood and their soil made rich with fat. For the Lord has a day of vengeance, a year of vindication for Zion's cause. And the streams of Edom shall be turned into pitch and her soil into sulfur. Her land shall become a burning, become burning pitch. Night and day it shall not be quenched. Its smoke shall go up forever. From generation to generation it shall lie waste. No one shall pass through it forever and ever. 
but the desert owl and the screech owl shall possess it the great owl and the raven shall live in it he shall stretch the line of confusion and the plummet of chaos over it they shall call its nobles no kingdom there and all its princes shall be nothing thorns shall grow over its strongholds nettles and thistles in its fortresses it shall be the haunt of jackals an abode for ostriches wild cats shall meet with hyenas goat demons shall call to each other there also lilith shall repose and find a place to rest there shall the owl nest and lay and hatch and brood in its shadow there also the buzzards shall gather each one with its mate seek and read from the book of the lord not one of these shall be missing none shall be without its mate for his mouth it has commanded and his spirit it has gathered them he has cast the lot for them his hand has portioned it out to them with the line they shall possess it from generation to generation they shall live in it chapter 35 the return of the redeemed to zion the wilderness and the dry land shall be glad the desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and shouting the glory of lebanon shall be given to it the majesty of carmel and sharon they shall see the glory of the lord the majesty of our god strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees say to those who are of a fearful heart be strong do not fear here is your god he will come with vengeance with terrible recompense he will come and save you then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be opened then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy for waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert the burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water the haunt of jackals shall become a swamp the grass shall become reeds and rushes a highway shall be there and it shall be called the holy way the unclean shall not travel on it but it shall be for god's people no traveler not even fools shall go astray no lion shall be there nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it they shall not be found there but the redeemed shall walk there and the ransom of ransomed of the lord shall return and come to zion with singing everlasting joy shall be upon their heads they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away chapter 36 sennacherib threatens jerusalem in the fourteenth year of king hezekiah king sennacherib of assyria came up against all the fortified cities of judah and captured them the king of assyria sent rabshakeh with a great army from Lashish to King Hezekiah at Jerusalem. He stood by the conduit of the upper pool on the highway to the fuller's field. And there came out to him Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, who was in charge of the palace, and Shibna, the secretary, and Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder the rabshakeh said to them say to hezekiah thus says the great king the king of assyria on what do you base this reliance of yours do you think that mere words are strategy and power for war on whom then do you now rely that you have rebelled against me see you are relying on egypt that broken reed of a staff which will pierce the hand of anyone who leans on it such is pharaoh king of egypt to all who rely on him but if you say to me we rely on the lord our god is it not he whose high places and altars hezekiah has removed saying to judah and to jerusalem you shall worship before this altar 
Come now, make a wager with my master, the king of Assyria. I will give you 2,000 horses, if you are able on your part to set riders on them. How then can you repulse a single captain among the least of my master's servants, when you rely on Egypt for chariots and for horsemen? Moreover, is it without the Lord that I have come up against this land to destroy it? The Lord said to me, Go up against this land and destroy it. Then Eliakim, Shebna, and Joah said to Rabshakeh, to the Rabshakeh, Please speak to your servants in Aramaic, for we understand it. Do not speak to us in the language of Judah, within the hearing of the people who are on the wall. But the Rabshakeh said, Has my master sent me to speak these words to your master and to you and not to the people sitting on the wall, who are doomed with you to eat their own dung and drink their own urine? Then the Rabshakeh stood and called out in a loud voice in the language of Judah, Hear the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus says the king, Do not let Hezekiah deceive you, for he will not be able to deliver you. Do not let Hezekiah make you rely on the Lord by saying, The Lord will surely deliver us. This city will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Do not listen to Hezekiah. For thus says the king of Assyria, Make your peace with me and come out to me. Then every one of you will eat from your own vine and your own fig tree and drink water from your own cistern until I come and take you away to a land like your own land, a land of grain and, grain and wine, a land of bread and vineyards. Do not let Hezekiah mislead you by saying the Lord will deliver us. Has any of the gods of the nations delivered their land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Sepharvaim? Have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? Who among all the gods of these countries have delivered their countries out of my hand, that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand? But they were silent and answered him not a word, for the king's command was, Do not answer him. Then Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, who was in charge of the place, and Shebna the secretary, and Joah, son of Asaph, the recorder, came to Hezekiah with their clothes torn and told him the words of the Rabshakeh. Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 through 26. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become enslaved to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. The works of the flesh live by the spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the spirit, and what the spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, envying 
one another. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 23. Buy truth and do not sell it. Buy wisdom, instruction, and understanding. Well, this has been the Word of God and the Word of Life. Thanks be to God, and we'll see you tomorrow.